me today. I'm Juliana Coles, and this is A Woman's Journey, The Inner Wisdom of the Reluctant Crone. And if you haven't read the introduction chapter yet, I recommend that you start there. That's going to give you all the information you need to know about what is a visual journal, um, what are we doing, why are we combining words with images in a book format, um, and how to choose your book. I'm going to be giving some details in that chapter that I'm not going to be talking about here. So I recommend that you read that first. Well, let's get started. Um, any book, any size will be fine. You know, if it calls to you and it really feels right, if you have a book that you are already working in, feel free to continue using that. If you want to start a new one, that sounds great too. I like altering books. That's my favorite way of working now, but I used to only work in blank sketchbooks. Personally, I think this one's too small. Um, remember that we're going to be adding a page um, to another side because we're making a triptych, and a triptych is three. So even if we add another page to this, it's, it's still pretty small. I have another um, small book here. Um, this one's a little bit bigger, not, not much, but it's still, it can work. And I'm just going to show you some examples of foldouts to give you ideas of what the triptych is going to look like and even how far you can take that. This particular book came like this. Um, it's a, ch a children, a young adult novel, a mis uh, adventure, and it had these pages that opened up. I didn't make that. It already came like that. Uh, so we want to look at both sides of it. You know, how does it fit? In our book we only need three but you can always add more and this book has many of these um, these fold outs and you can see so this one was this is what it was it was this ship and it's really cool and that folds in um, this one folds out again you know more fold outs so you can take it really as far as you want in this project. I'm calling it a triptych, which is three, but you can do uh, much more than that. This one is really cool. It folds up. I can never figure out how to open it. Um, let's see here. Okay, so it folds out like that, and it folds up like this. So this one, even though it's small, could be really giant. There are a lot of ways to think about it in a lot of ways to think about making that work. Um, this book I'm altering, it was a book on mermaids. It's a nice little kind of mid-size. And in your PDF, your introductory PDF, I talk about uh, when we do add a page, and don't worry about that yet or right now, we're gonna talk about that a lot more. I said don't add anything too thick. Um, but I said I've I've added something as thick as a cigar box top. So this this fold in is a cigar box top, and the the binding here is really weird and sort of thick between the pages. So it actually works in this book and it's fine. It's not a problem. Uh, so so that's fun. Uh, but I I don't re recommend anything too thick. This is just, I think there was another page on one of these sides that I cut off. I, I was looking for some of my older um, three card mandala triptychs, which is what we're doing. And I couldn't find too many that were intact. I think what ends up happening is I don't finish the assignment because it's very complicated. And when I work with a live group, I just kind of move on. But we've got the luxury of of time to be able to process this assignment and give it its due time. This was actually a, um, a mandala, and instead of creating circles, I saw shapes that were hearts, and to me, that was mandala-like, mandala-ish. So as we move on, don't feel limited by the idea of a circle, or, or what's a circle, or being confined to the circle. You're going to want to respond to what is there on the page. This is another fold out. I think this one's pretty thick. Maybe this is a record cover or something. And uh, we did this as a collaboration. That's how I do it live. We all work together 
and we pass our books around and we make a really big mess. And when it's done, every time I've done it, I always think, wow, everyone looks really cool. Mine looks like shit. So, um, or crap, whatever. Um, this was pretty much how it was. This is what I ended up with. I did very little to it. I saw these lines that came out. There was like an eyeball here. It looked like a game board. It kind of reminded me of Candyland or something. And these, this image with these two figures and this moon and this spider was all here. And I really did very little. It's a very meaningful um, page for me. Very exciting. And you can see these are sort of my go-to sizes. It's, I'm comfortable in that. And remember, when we're choosing a book, um, we've got, you know, rectangle. This is, um, you know, landscape direction so that it would open out this way. And all the sizes we're going to be, we'll, it will make us work differently in those books. This one is square. Let's see what I've got in here. This book's pretty old. Um, so the example that I'm showing here is another fold out. Um, I've got different size fold out, fold up, fold in. This was just a scrap piece of paper and I really didn't do much in here but I'm just showing you different ways to add the fold out. And this page, I don't know why I worked in it upside down and just folding in. Oh, and one thing I wanted to show with this one is when I closed it up, this got stuck over here. So you may want to consider that, how they're going to fit. We'll talk about this later. Uh, but we'll be working back and forth and seeing how they fold back up and how does how do the back pages relate. Um, we're gonna, it's, it's going to be more of a series than just a three card spread here. We're going to be, we're going to be doing a lot with these pages. So I have a couple of larger books. This one's really old. This one's from 1996 to 2000. But you can see, I used to work in these big sketchbooks. This is a blank sketchbook. I didn't tear any pages out or anything. And I just let them grow and get giant. And I used to work really differently. But this is the first mandala I ever did. I don't know what year this is, probably 90, 96 or something. Um, based on a book that my dad had given me. We can see that's not even hardly a circle. My circle was really imperfect. And then these were all the notes that I made about that. Um, here's some more mandalas. There might have been another page on either one of these. I, I can't remember. Um, but you can see how things fit in a, in a bigger book or a smaller book. Our assignment is so multi-layered that, um, you know, this one's almost more like a game board mandala. Um, um, what was I going to say? All these layers um, that, that really big might be intimidating. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, here, this one is like this. Oh, and there's one I wanted to show that was more of a, uh, shoot, I lost the page. Um, well, maybe I'll find it for later. Um, that it was more, it was made out of scraps and shapes. The mandala was more fluid um, and kind of raw. But I'll find it when we talk more about the mandalas as we go on. And this one, uh, this is the one I did most recently at a workshop in Florida. And I ended up gluing a, a picture of a friend on top. And then this was the back of it. This is kind of how it came. I didn't really work any further on it, but just in my brief investigations of it, I knew that it was important. And I knew that there was a lot going on here. It may not look like it to you guys. Um, and this was another collaboration. The entire group, the entire circle of wise women worked on this, adding different things for me. And so that was the inspiration for this workshop. I really wanted to finish this and I really wanted to give it its time and its due. So I think that's, that's good enough to, to show you the kind of, in terms of the assignment, what we're gonna be doing. I think that will help you find your book and your size. So let me just hold the little one up. When we do our mandalas, 
we're going to add another page. Actually, let me just come back to this one. We're going to be adding another page and oops. Okay. So, we need two pages and then we need to add a page and add a page. Don't worry about that now. I'm going to explain all of that. Um but so you may want to pick a page that's either black, blank or you're not attached to on the back side and also the back side here. We have other things. We've got a different assignment that we're going to do on top here. But just be thinking about how these fold in and fold out. We're going to do this together. We're going to add a page together. So don't, don't, you don't need to do that yet or right now or even think about that. You're just, your first step is just to read your introduction chapter. It's going to tell you, again, how to choose your book. You're going to gather your supplies. You're going to set up your creative space and download the next chapter so we can figure out what's next. Uh, we have one more video for this chapter, and that is All Decked Out, How to Choose Your Deck. Thanks. See you soon.